and today we are working on rapid fire. As you can see, I have everything open and we are trying to chase down a bad switch. Now, I have taken off this plastic here. It's only held on by these little white rubbers to keep them on. Go ahead and take that off and then, as you can see, there are posts here that come out and then you can access the optical switch and I've already taken them out because I thought one of them was one of them was not working. However, I have some replacements and both of those all test out good in my good spot. So this is my good location and this is my bad location. Turns out I have a voltage issue. So I, I check this and everything is here that it needs to be as far as five volts, but except there was one wire that did not register with enough voltage. And I'll show you what I did, but I ended up using the schematic. We'll take a look at the schematic and tracing it all the way back to where it goes on the board. And this is the connector that has the problems here. So we will need to take a look at that, maybe put a new connector in, and then hopefully we are in good shape. And as you can see, this does have some reproduction boards inside. But that's the idea as far as how this repair is going to work. I'll go ahead and show you what I did as far as testing purposes. So I have my switches just laying here and installed so that we can see what happens. In the switch test mode, you can hit a switch and you hold it down and you can hear an audible noise. It'll also tell you what number it is. So for example, if I back out here, I can hit this switch and then I let go. But if I hit this other one, I get nothing. So we're going to check and I'll show you how I determined that they were good. I ended up swapping both of these. That told me that, hey, you know what? Both of these optos are good. So let's go ahead and we'll just do that real quick. We'll take what we think is the bad one and we'll put it in. Here, nothing. We hear nothing. We put in the other one. Alright, so I move that one aside and then I'll put this one back in as well. Test it. We hear nothing. I move it over to the other one. And we're good. So we know we have an issue with the wiring. So the next thing I'm going to do is we'll check voltage and hopefully you can see what's happening without my hand being in the way, but we'll give it a whirl. Put my meter on DC volts and the bottom right here is the ground. So we're just going to go ahead and we'll move over to the ground and we'll check it. Let's see if I can actually get it on there. So let's see if we can see this. So the far right pin here, I know this is hard to see, that's our ground. And if I come over and test, I should be able to get, I should be able to get a reading, maybe. Nope, this is difficult. There we go, five volts. You saw it there for a second. I'm not getting a good connection. All right, then we work our way down. Maybe, let me try taking this off. Just need something to hold it. All right. Can't quite get. There we go, finally got it in there. All right, five volts, so that's good. And I went through and I tested each one, 2.9 about. And I made it down to the last pin, and I'll show you in here in a second. Let's me just show you, because let's be serious. You can't actually see what I'm doing, but you get the idea of what I'm doing. I tested. 
I tested the voltage on each one and I started with that far right pin that you kind of saw and then I went all the way down and I determined that my last pin here was reading about uh, two and a half volts or so but when I tested it on my other known working one I got a lot less I mean I actually I'm taking that back I got the real voltage which is closer to four and a half on that end pin so because that voltage was off I go okay that's my problem. Of course, you know, if this camera could focus, you'd see it and you have an idea. But there we go. That last one was reading closer to four and a half on the good one. And on the bad one here, it was reading two and a half or so. That told me that, you know what? There's a problem with that wire because the other one's good. And that's the only difference there was. So I was just comparing voltage values as a place to start. So the next thing I did is I determined, hey, you know what, this wire is white with a blue tracer on it, a blue band. This allowed me to kind of figure out where we we're going to look in our schematic. So it's that wire right there, and we inspected it on this side and it looked okay. And then it was a matter of figuring out where did it go. Now for the challenging part for some of us, taking a look at a schematic and figuring out where everything goes. I personally find the wiring diagrams to be some of the easier ones. We are looking at the wiring diagram for the play field, and that's indicated here in the bottom corner of the screen there. And we're going to go ahead and take a look now at, we've got a, a chart up here, a code, a wire color code, or key that tells us where everything is. And we are looking for the side targets is what we're working on. So here are our side targets, and it tells us each one. We've got our, our right rear one. We have our left rear. We've got our rear two, our right second one, our left second one, our right third one, our left third one, and then it says RF, so right front, and then LF for left front. So let's zoom in so we can actually take a look at what those are saying. So as we look, they all have locations on them. It tells us what each one is for. We've got our ground, which is what we were testing. And then it was, I believe, the last pin for us, which would be pin one, it says I7 on it, was the one that we had an issue with. And it tells us, you know, which jumper it's on. It's on our J2, and it's the 15th position on J2. And then it says 5-2 here, and this is the wire color, 5-2. And if we go back to our wire color code, here five is white sometimes marked with a W and then the second number says so the first number is the body color the second number is the tracer color so two is blue so we've got a five and a two which means it's white with the blue tracer that's exactly what we want so okay Good, we now know where we need to go based off of our diagram here. And I need to then go find where J215 is on the main board. If I turn over, I have another diagram page. And this one is the back box wiring diagram. So I'd like to know where it goes. So if we look at all this mess that we, we can't quite see, let's zoom in. This says it's our AMPU, which tells us what board it's on, A4, and we are looking for J2, and here is J2. We need to go check position 15. So here's position 15 down at the bottom. And it does match our wire color, which is 5 2, the white with the blue tracer. So we now are going to go to our back box and we're going to check that position on that connector and see what's going on with it. We're now looking at the back box for the rapid fire. And I'm going to look at the MPU board for this game, which is this reprodu uh, reproduction from Alltech. 
from Altec Systems, and I can already tell you, I do know where it is, but I'll show you how it's labeled. If you look real close at the top of this connector here, it says, if it focuses, gosh, time for a new camera, J2. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and pull this connector off. Okay, and if I look at this connector, I could tell you, and this connector has seen some better days. We got some discoloration in there for sure. Makes me wonder if there are other switches that are an issue. Position 15, it's this white and blue one here on the end. You probably can't see it on camera, but as I look through, I can tell that this end connector here, this pin, looks slightly broken compared to this side. So I'm going to assume that I've got a bad connector here, and based on the discoloration that I'm seeing on it, I believe we are going to uh, want to repin this anyway. So that's the plan, that's what we're going to do. We're going to make a new connector for this. Now you've all seen me repin connectors before, this is nothing new, but basically what we're going to do is cut off the old wire and put a new pin, a new crimp terminal on, and then we're gonna put it into a new housing because the old housing is an IDC connector where they get crimped in differently and it makes them a pain to change. So on that connector, it looks like it could be on the brittle side, so we're gonna replace this anyway. It also makes changing things out later down the road a little bit easier to do. So that's what we're gonna do. This is a uh, 0.100 inch connection, and that's what the, this is the smaller one. The ones that are typically used on uh, video arcades might be the 0.156, they're a little bit bigger. You find those as the video connector signal on most of your monitors for the video cable. So that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna put a new connector on and then we'll test everything out. I'm not going to film that. You've seen it before. It's not super exciting. But there you go. That's, that's our plan of attack for this repair. So we've gone ahead and we've put on a new connector. Here's the old one. I did about four wires at a time, just making sure everything lines up. I marked where my key is. I even put a key spacer in there so that we're good to go. Let's go ahead and pop that on. Feels nice and snug already. All right. Now we can go ahead and test our switch to see if that it did indeed fix it. So I've connected the two switches here. We're gonna go ahead and we'll test them up there. On the, we are in switch test mode. So we'll go ahead and try this. This is the one that we know that works. Yeah. Actually, it seems to be responding faster too. Here's the new one. Well, not the new one, but we put the new connector in here, so we're now going to see if that did indeed fix this one. All right. So there we have it, that's how we went about and fixed this switch that we thought wasn't working, but it turns out it was the wiring. And if we look at this old connector here, we can see it's got some corrosion on it and is in rough shape. So there we go. That did the fix for the switch on a rapid fire.